when our lives become very difficult and we feel overwhelmed, is there any hope? Yes. Hi, I'm Father Mike Manning. Uh, God bless you. Thank you very much for, for getting in touch with this program. I think you're going to be experiencing something very powerful today in this program. It's um, centered on the, the struggle of when we hit bottom. Hmm. Uh, well, we, we all know the experience of being foolish. Uh, uh, we said something or, or did something with, with all the conviction that we could muster. We, we went down the road with confidence, with a real great pace. We even were willing to lay down money on a bet that we were right. <laughs> but then, to our shame and embarrassment, we're exposed as wrong. Oh, the blood rushes to our face. We're humiliated. We want to hide but there's no escape. We're complete fools. <laughs> Paul speaks of our foolishness and then throws in the experiences of weakness. We don't have the strength to, to fight back. We know what it means to really feel lowly. In our desire to be considered significant and respected by others, <laughs> were put down and made to feel lowly. And sometimes these negative experiences make us scrape bottom. We're overcome with depression. And as Paul says, we are left to count for nothing. Let me read to you from Paul. Paul, I, I, I like Paul very much. Um, he knows how to hit the nerves of our life and maybe get us centered on what really is important, especially when everything seems to be falling apart in our life. And Paul, who's this guy, he's this great preacher. I mean, he travels all over the world. He does all kind of wonderful stuff. But he has the humility and the honesty to talk about when everything seems to fall apart. I'm reading from the first chapter of Corinthians. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are, uh, are, are not, to be reduced to nothing. I can imagine that Paul, in his desire to share the love of Jesus, ran into all kinds of problems. In one section of his letters, he tells about being shipwrecked and being whipped with uh, a cat and nine tails and being beaten by sticks. At one point he was even stoned. <laughs> they picked up stones and, they, and they, they thought that they had killed him. <laughs> Imagine that. And yet, in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all of this hitting the bottom, Paul was able to find a point of power, a point of strength. And the point of his words is that despite the foolishness and the weakness, the being counted for nothing by people in the world, um, he was able to find a blessing. In our humiliation and failure, we become, this is what's crazy, when everything falls apart, we become like a fertile ground 
in which God can put the seeds to allow us to grow. How does that happen? Well, how do you, how do you get that? How do you, how do you get out of the, the overwhelming obstacles, the things that are totally out of, out of kilter? He says, we embrace Jesus. We find a wisdom, a wisdom in Jesus to counter our foolishness. A strength pushes, pushes us out of our weakness. In Jesus' love, we're able to rise from depression and being counted as nothing. All of a sudden, because of the reality of this God that we're preaching and that we're celebrating today, we're significant. And get this, we're even important. I, I, I think of this transformation in terms of a, an alcoholic or a heroin addict hitting bottom. You know, after all the failed resolutions and the therapy session, there comes a moment of, of, of hopelessness, and we've all touched that. But somehow, hitting bottom can be the way of starting again. It, it's, it's in Christian parlance, it's the reality of moving from death to life. It's moving from the grave to the resurrection. I'll, I'll never forget, uh, I, I got a call one time to go um, visit a lady. She, she was a, a nurse, and she had become addicted to um, uh, medication. You know, she was addicted. She was a drug addict. And she had done it uh, as a nurse to try to alleviate the pain that was in her body. But then she came to the realization that she was addicted and she couldn't live without this this constant flow of drugs in her body. And she, she called me to come and pray with her. And I'll never forget the scene. It's still vividly in my mind. I don't know if I can convey to you what I, what I saw. But here was this woman. She, she probably was in her late 30s, maybe early 40s. And um, she was in her nightgown, and she was on a large bed. And when I walked in the room, she looked up at me and, and acknowledged me, but the drugs had so taken control of her body that she didn't have control of her body. This, this poor woman who was trying to move through withdrawals was squirming and reaching out and whatnot. She just, the body was completely out of control. The drugs had so, so infiltrated into her being that she couldn't sit and talk as a normal person. You know? she, had, she had hit bottom, and she came and she asked for help. Well, I'm happy to say that she was able to move through the withdrawals and be able to find the peace that she was looking for. But it doesn't have to be a, uh, an addiction to drugs. It could be a, a failed marriage. It could be a failed dream of something we've always wanted to do and never been able to do it. And, 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 and the frustration of that could be so strong. Maybe there's, there's the bottom that we hit when all of a sudden the doctor comes and says, I'm sorry, you have a disease um, that can't be cured. You, know? <laughs> you hit bottom and, and you don't know where to go. I want you to think of Paul's words. This is what Paul says about our strength in, in the midst of what seems to be a bottom, and there isn't any looking up or looking down or getting out of this. God is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. I don't know if I'm making any sense to you. Uh, I, I hope um, that if you have touched bottom, if things have really fallen apart in your life, that you can hear this message of, of Paul. You can hear maybe my words 
in my own struggle to try to sometimes get out of things that seem overwhelming. God's love and God's power is there. Is it a habit of sin? <laughs> uh, are you lacking control of your children? Have you, lost, have, you, have you lost love in your marriage? Is there a problem with work? Oh gosh, you don't have work. And maybe you're even losing the security of your home. And, and you've lost all sense of dignity of who you are. And you, you might be even looking back and thinking, oh man, when I was a, when I was a young girl, when I was a young boy, that, that's, that's when things were together. But now <laughs> everything has fallen apart. Oh Lord, hold me tight when my world crumbles. Help me never forget that you are the source of my joy and life. Amen. I am very excited to tell you that I have written a book and I want you to be able to read it. It's a book that's called 15 Faces of God. It's a quest to know God through the parables of Jesus. I've, I've labored with this book for a long time and it's been a real labor of love because I feel that through this insight into the parables, we are opening up a wonderful insight into God. Now, I believe that Jesus was continually giving parables. They were ways of his getting out to many people, not just the people that went to synagogue and religious people, but parables were allowing him to get to the vast audience. And I couple that with the reality of how deeply Jesus loved his Father. We read in the Gospel of John time and again, he's, oh, I've come to do the Father's will. And when they asked him how to pray, it wasn't, oh, pray the name of Jesus. No, it, my Father. And what I've done is I've taken 15 of these marvelous parables, some maybe those that you hadn't heard too much about, and I allow us to open up the door of an understanding of who just God is. Some of, the, some of the insights into God, searching, humble, giving, celebrating, loving, authentic, generous, trusting, and even optimistic. Please, for your, for your gift and donation to the ministry, of $20 or more. I would love to send you this book. And not only are the lessons there, but there's a chance for you to have deep discussions because of questions that I presented. Remember, 15 Faces of God. Is there anything more wonderful in life than to be given a second chance? Well, I suppose there are. I suppose falling in love and having a baby would be great. But, but getting a second chance is very high on my list of, of, of life experiences. That second chance comes in a marriage when, when there's forgiveness and reconciliation after one has had an affair. I also think of the 50-year-old woman who left high school before graduating and now has embraced a second chance by getting a college degree. You, you, you have the word from a doctor that you have inoperable cancer and you only have a certain amount of months, if that, to live. You go through chemo and radiation and get all the friends to pray for you then a miracle happens. The doctor announces that you're cancer-free. <laughs> That's a real second chance, isn't it? You know? on, on the sports field, you, you might make a mess of the first half. You fumbled the ball, you tripped, and you, you missed the goal. But come the second half, you get to start again and you win. You know? Now. I want to share something with you about this second chance and kind of see if you can find a relationship to that, to what we experience with the church and with the sacraments. A second chance happens when we hear the priest at the beginning of Mass say, after 
you've admitted your sins to everyone in the church and to God. Get this, get this, these words. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. <laughs> wow, wow. Imagine that, right at the start of Mass, you hear the words that you are forgiven. Or in the sacrament of reconciliation, you muster the courage on a Saturday evening, you stand in line, and then nervously you lay your heart out and your habit of sin and your failures before the priest. And you are failing to follow what you know Christ wants you to do. And then the priest says, get this, looking you right in the eye, I absolve you of all of your sins. And I usually add the word, and you are good, <laughs> in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I, people sometimes ask me, um, have you ever encountered God? Well, I can honestly say yes, and usually it happens in the context of the Sacrament of Reconciliation, in the midst of my nervousness of my sins, and then having to turn to a priest, and usually the priest is my best friend, so that even makes it more difficult, because I want everybody to think that I'm my St. Michael of San Bernardino, and I have to say the truth. But then to hear that I'm forgiven and I'm accepted is one of the most profound realities of experiencing God in my life, and I invite you to think about that. Or, or, or perhaps you suddenly become aware of, of the force of God's forgiveness, like for the first time when the priest repeats Christ's words at the Last Supper, when he says over the chalice of wine, this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Ooh. Whoa. The cross, the blood, the price is paid. My sins are forgiven. And now you realize that Christ's blood is a source of forgiveness. In the penitential rite, in the, in the sacrament of reconciliation, and in the drinking of the blood of Jesus, we are given a second chance. Wow! In Ezekiel, uh, uh, God not only gives us the hope of a second chance, the Lord wants to flood us with His Spirit. <laughs> God wants to come into the Spirit. L listen, if you would, to these powerful words uh, of, a, of, of the magnanimous God, the, the God that reaches out far beyond us that we can understand and gives us His love. L let me read this to you. This is Ezekiel chapter 36. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. That's a great idea, isn't it? <laughs> we... we I, I guess there are a bunch of songs that are sung about, oh, you've got a stone heart, you've got a stone heart. But we, we know sometimes we can have stone hearts, can't we? We can, we can be insensitive to, to God's love. We can be insensitive to the people that we live with. We can be insensible to, insensitive to oh, maybe a stranger we meet on the road. And yet God speaks through the prophet and says, I want to change your heart, and I want to move from stone to life. And this is this second chance. All we've got to do is come to God and say, God, help! <laughs> I, I heard your word from the prophet. I like it. 
and now would you please apply that to me? Would you, would you please give me a more tender heart? Especially with regard to accepting the fact of your love. In our, in our lives as followers of Jesus, there's no place for abiding discouragement nor despair. No, not that we don't get discouraged or even despair. But there's no place for that to abide. Our faith tells us that God will never give up on us. <laughs> this is what it's about. You know? That idea of a second chance is always there. We can always turn to him with hope. And as Ezekiel said, God wants to flood us with more than life. He wants our lives to be filled with spirit. I love that image of that, that heart of stone becoming supple and, and, and beating with love. I'm speaking of our reality of hitting bottom in our life. There's always a second chance for us. But, and, and this is important too now, we also need to face that there are people in our lives who hit bottom and are close to hitting bottom. bottom. I'm thinking of friends and relatives, um, people we love, uh, and our, our heart aches as we see, see them abuse their gift of freedom as they ruin their lives and, uh, and reach out and hurt those around them. Aware of our own capacity to fail, we must be strong in our faith, hope, and love that they can turn their lives around. <laughs> that doesn't mean that we condone the wrong that they're doing. <laughs> um, often, often we have to start by, uh, by standing by helplessly as they move to the bottom. Still, we never give up on them. The door is always open. The Bible, the Bible says that there's hope even in the midst of the most seemingly helpless situations. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for offering me a second chance. Help me to accept your offer and be willing to give a second chance to someone in my life today. Please. If you think that you've hit bottom, if you think that maybe you've committed the sin that no one could ever forgive, I'm coming to you and saying, it's not so. Now is the time of a beginning. Now is the time of accepting a love that can transform your life, the moving from the discouragement, from the despair, from the hopelessness to hope. And more than hope, to love and the power of love to change your life. Come on, let's choose God. I am delighted to tell you that I've written a book and I'd love for you to get it and read it and be blessed. I've, I've worked on this book for many years and I believe that if you read it, your relationship with God is going to grow very, very deep. It can be a blessing. It's called 15 Faces of God. What I've done is I've taken 15 of Jesus' parables and allowed those parables to be a door that opens to us through Jesus into who God the Father is. Oh, you're going to, you're going to be really shocked in many ways, but also blessed by the insight of God as a as a searcher, as an optimist, as a lover. Please, for your gift of $20 or more, I would love to send you this powerful book. Remember, 15 Faces of God. I want you to be blessed. I try as best I can to stay in touch with you. Um, when I'm sitting down and trying to prepare my talks, I. I try to listen to what you offer me in your, your prayers and even in your suggestions, and I thank you very much for that. It's important that we kind of stay in touch with each other. 
um, watch on the television show or even watch on the, on the internet. You can watch with wordnet.tv and you can watch the program 24-7. Uh, may I ask you too, would you, would you try to pass word to others about this program? I'm thinking of uh, maybe you've got a parish bulletin and uh, just to maybe a word to the secretary giving the time of when the program is or maybe just offering it through the web page. Well, I'd love to see more people to do that. They say that the best advertising is word of mouth so that if you could be able to do that, I'd, I'd really be appreciative. But I also want you, along with doing that, get in touch with me. Um, we have a blog um, page on our web page, and love to hear what you think. You know, if, you've, if you're reacting to what I've said, I'd, I'd love to hear it, and we can get a little dialogue going. Um, if you would also, would you share with me if you have any special prayers that are deep in your heart? Mostly, Make sure that in the quiet of your hearts you admit the fact of God's love for you and accept that love. I'm going to ask you now, if you would, to uh, kind of join with the wonderful people that have written in. Um, I'm going to take you now, I don't know where these came from but because these are from the internet, but they're beautiful prayers and this is from Mary. Um, she, she asks for prayers for my husband, for family, for myself that God will heal us in the ways we need. Also have an infilling of our lives of the Holy Spirit. Um, Stephen, uh, again, I'm not sure where, please pray so that I get a house because um, I need that so much. Um, I, I don't have the money because of retirement and things are very, very tough. Okay, Stephen, we want to remember you there. Um, Bethia. I want God to bless me with a good job and also uh, my brother Jacob uh, as we finish school uh, and we don't have any job. Oh, look at that. Isn't that something? Oh, I thank you for sending in these prayers. Um, here's, a, here's another one. This is from also from Bethiah. Um, healing from stroke in the life of, of her father. And I need to, to heal her infection. <laughs> All these. Join me right now. Let, let's just pray and, and let's believe in the power of prayer and ask God to come. Lord, come into these lives. Bring healings into minds, into hearts, and into souls. And may Jesus' love for you always make you smile.